Hello. What we're going to do here is we're going to look at how we can extract the coefficients of some regressions from the coefficients table produced by the summary function in R, which is produced when we have a linear model. We're going to look at a straightforward, simple linear regression, and then we're going to look at a couple of linear models where we have linear regressions, but more than one factor. So we have two different lines fitted to our data. The data we're going to be using are these. These are data on field measurements of metabolic rate and mass for 133 animal species. And they're derived from this publication here. They have a much more sophisticated analysis than the one we're going to talk about. If you want to know all about that, I recommend that you read the paper. OK, so we've got log of the mean field metabolic rate in kilojoules per day on the y-axis. On the x-axis, we've got the log of the mean mass for each species. And what you can see is we've got a pretty strong positive relationship there. And it looks just about like it's a straight line all the way through. So if we want to describe that relationship without worrying too much about what particular tax of these species are coming from, we can do it with a simple linear regression. We fit our simple linear regression using the LM function, and then we use summary to produce the summary table in R. And this summary table is what tends to cause people sleepless nights, anxiety attacks, increase their amount of bitten fingernails, and so on. So what we're going to try and do is just focus on the regression coefficients we can extract from this table. We're not going to worry about things like the residuals. We're not going to worry about the R squared. We're just going to worry about the regression coefficients. We're not even going to worry about whether or not they're statistically significant or not. We're just going to try and produce a line from this summary table. So what have we got when we look at this? Well, first of all, we should probably have a quick look at the formula that we fed LM. First of all, we've got the log of field metabolic rate, and we're calculating that log within the function call. Then we've got a tilde, which says as explained by, and then we have the log of mass. And again, we're calculating that log within our function call. And then finally, we're telling it to extract those variables from a data frame that we've called MET3. So that's the formula that we've put into the model. We've fitted a linear model. We've saved it as an object called mod1. And then we're looking at the summary. And what we're interested in is extracting the intercept and the slope that describe the relationship between field metabolic rate and mass, or to put it more precisely, the relationship between the log of field metabolic rate and the log of mass. And that intercept and that slope are given in the coefficients table. First of all, we have the intercept, and that is conveniently called the intercept in this case. And then we have a row that says log mass, and the value there under intercept, that is the slope. So if we have the equation of a straight line, y equals a plus bx, we can take those values, we can put that into that equation, and we can produce an equation that describes the straight line relating the log of field metabolic rate to the log of mass. And here it is. The log of field metabolic rate is equal to 6.78, that's the blue number, plus 0.644 multiplied by the log of mass. And we can color code the numbers in that as well, so you can see where they've come from. All good so far, nice and straightforward. OK, now we want to draw a line onto our graph that shows that relationship. And we can do that using the AB line function, or sometimes AB line, as it's called. And you can see here that I've added an AB line instruction to the bottom of my code. We can color code the intercept and the slope once again, so you can see where those values are coming from. And there's a few other arguments I've given it. I want the line to be a bit wider than the default, and I want a color that's not the default as well. I want it a, a mid-gray shade. So let's see what we get if we draw that. OK, here's our graph, and that's a nice looking graph. There's only one problem with that, and only someone who's quite a purist would worry about that, but I'm going to worry about it. The problem is that our line is extending beyond the limits of our data. It goes all the way from one edge of the plot to the other edge. And you could argue that that's implying that we have knowledge that we don't have, that we understand what's going on outside the limits of our data. So maybe we want to draw a line that just goes from the minimum value of mean mass to the maximum value of mean mass and doesn't extend all the way to the edge of the plot. There isn't a built-in function in R to do this, but I've just written a very short little function here that will do that for us. 
If you don't know what any of this means, don't worry. It's just a function for drawing a line onto a graph, just like a B line is, and it takes the, the intercept and the slope of our line as two of the arguments that go into it. Okay, so if we're gonna do that, I've replotted the graph here, and then I've used this function that I've written, and once again, we can color code our intercept and our slope, and you can see where they've come from in that coefficients table and how they're going into our function. And we do that, and what we end up with is this graph here, which is just like the previous one, except the line only extends to the limits of the data, um, which is, scientifically speaking, slightly more acceptable than the previous one. Okay, that's all good. And I think it's quite easy to extract regression coefficients from a simple linear regression in R. Sometimes though, we don't want to just plot a single line, we want to divide our data up. And one of the most obvious ways that we could divide this type, this set of data up, for example, is by dividing it up between the birds and the mammals. This data set is restricted to birds and mammals, and we can ask the question of whether the relationship between metabolic rate and mean mass is different in birds and mammals. So here is a graph with the birds and the mammals color coded. In the paper, it refers to them as aves and mammalia, so I'm carrying on with that. Um, obviously, that just means birds and mammals, but in posh scientific speak. It's taken me a little bit more code to draw this graph because I had to separate out the points and color code them. Just for your reference, here is the code that drew that graph for me. I'm just gonna skip straight on and go back to this graph here. So what we want to do is fit a model where we have birds and mammals with separate regression lines for each. And what we're gonna start out with is the case where we're fitting a model where those two regression lines differ in terms of the intercept, but they don't differ in terms of the slope. In other words, we're gonna fit a model with no interaction term between class and log mean mass. Here is our model again. So once again, we've got our LM function at the top, and we've saved a model called mod2, and then, we, then we've used the summary function to produce our summary table again. And it's getting a little bit more complicated than our straightforward linear regression. We've got an extra line in the coefficients table. So as before, let's just kick off by looking at the formula that we fed to the LM function. And we've told it that we want the log of the field metabolic rate as explained by the log of mass, but also by the class of the animal species in question. And once again, we've told it to use our MET3 data frame. Okay, so we've now got three lines in our coefficients table. We've got intercept, log mass, and then we've got something that says class mammalia with no space. So what do all of these slightly more cryptic entries actually mean? Well, first of all, we have the intercept, but we're fitting two lines, so we should have two intercepts, shouldn't we? Yes, we should. What you need to know is that that is the intercept for the factor level that comes first in alphabetical order. So our factor in this case is class. Class has two levels. Those are aves, birds, and mammalia. Aves comes first in alphabetical order. So that intercept value, that is the intercept for the line describing the relationship between log fmr and log mass for birds only. Next one, log mass. Well, that's the same as one of the entries in the coefficients table that we had when we were looking at simple linear regression. And that again is the slope. This time we're fitting a model where both regression lines share the same slope. So this is the common slope for both regression lines. Both regression lines have a slope of 0.677. And then finally, we have this slightly more obscure entry that says class mammalia, all in one word. You may have noticed by now that class is the name of the factor and mammalia is the name of one of the factor levels. And that value there, minus 0.44008, is the difference between the intercept for class aves and the intercept for class mammalia. So in other words, class mammalia has an intercept which is 7.009 minus 0.44. Okay, so once again, now that we know what those values mean, we can write down the regression lines or we can write down the formulas of the straight lines that represent our fitted regressions. So let's start with the birds. 
log of the field metabolic rate is equal to 7.01 plus 0.677 times the log of mass. And then moving on to mammalia, the log of the field metabolic rate is equal to 7.01, but now 7.01 minus 0.44, that gives us the intercept, plus 0.677 times the log of mass. And we can color code all of these and you can see where these values came from. So first of all, the intercept value from the coefficients table, and you can see that appears in both of our equations. Then the slope, and we know this is the common slope. Both of our regression lines have the same slope. And then finally, the difference between the intercepts for class mammalia and class aves, and that only appears once. That difference between intercepts is a really important thing to think about because that's telling us what the effect size is of moving from being a mammal to a bird or vice versa. All the way across the relationship between field metabolic rate and log of mass, assuming our model is the appropriate one to use, the mammals have a lower value or have on average a lower value for their field metabolic rate than do the birds. And that value there is telling us the difference when we're plotting them out in log space. So let's draw, let's draw our lines. And once again, we're using this function that I've written to just draw lines between the minimum and the maximum of the data that we're looking at. And we can color code once again, our intercept, our common slope, and then the difference between our two intercepts. And let's have a look at what that looks like when we draw it on a graph. That's now our graph. And you can see that the two lines are parallel. They have a common slope but they differ in intercept, and that difference in the intercept is the value that we got from our coefficients table. Okay, right. Next, we want to fit a model where we allow the slopes to vary as well as the intercept. Here's our model, and we've now got four lines in our coefficients table. Let's start off by just looking at that model formula again. First of all, We've got log field metabolic rate and then a tilde, meaning as explained by. So that's set telling us that the field metabolic rate is the response variable, and we have two explanatory variables, the log of mass and class. But what's different now with this formula is that instead of a plus between our two explanatory variables, we've got an asterisk. And what the asterisk means is fit all of the main effects and all of the interactions of the terms that are linked by the asterisk. In this case, we've only got two terms, so there's only one possible interaction term, which is the interaction term between class, a factor, and the log of mass. When we're fitting linear models, where we have interaction terms between a factor and a continuous explanatory variable, you can think of that interaction term as telling you what the difference in the slopes is. And a significant interaction term tells us, that, tells us that there's a statistically significant difference between the slopes. As a very brief aside, this particular interaction term isn't statistically significant, but we're not gonna worry about that for the purposes of finding out what all of these coefficients mean. Okay, onto our coefficients table, and up at the top, we've got the intercept. And that's the same as it was before. That's the intercept for the factor level that comes first in the alphabet. In other words, class Arves. Then we have log of mass, and that's now the slope, but it's only the slope for the Arves. It's only the slope for the birds. Then we have class mammalia. And once again, that is the difference in the intercept between the birds and the mammals. And then finally, We've got the interaction coefficient, log mass colon class mammalia. That is 0.036. I'm gonna color code it this kind of purple color. And that's telling us the difference in slopes. So the slope for the mammals is 0.654 minus 0.03. Okay. So now we know what all of those coefficients mean. I'm just gonna run through them again so you've got a really clear idea in your head. The intercept is the intercept that corresponds with the factor level that comes first in the alphabet. Class is our factor. Arves comes before mammalia, 
So that is the intercept for class Aves. The next line where it says log mass is the slope of the regression line that corresponds to the factor level that we've got for the intercept. So that is the slope for the regression line for the class Aves or the birds. The next line, class Mammalia, that is the difference between the two intercepts. And then finally, we have the interaction term, log mass colon class mammalia, and that's telling us the difference between the slopes for our two regression lines. So now that we know that, we can write out the equations for our lines again. For the birds, log fmr is equal to 6.96, there we go, that top line, plus 0.655 times the log of mass. And for the mammals, log of fmr is equal to the intercept overall minus the difference in intercepts so 6.96 i've written here minus 0.388 and then the slope is equal to 0.655 the slope estimated for the birds plus 0.037 and then the sum of those two numbers multiplied by the log of mass and we can color code the entries in these equations again, just to show you exactly where they're coming from. So that's where that intercept goes. Then we have that value for the slope, which goes there. And then the other two values are telling us the differences between the birds and the mammals. So the difference in intercept goes there. And then finally, the difference in slopes goes there. Okay, this is how we would draw those lines onto our plot using my little function for those of us who are concerned about whether or not a line extends beyond a set of data or not. And once again, we can color code the entries there to show you where they're coming from. Okay, that last violet one, the difference in slopes did slip over the, uh, slip over the edge a bit, but never mind. Okay, and that is the graph that we get. And you can see that now we have two lines on that graph with slopes that are not equal to each other. Okay, thank you for listening.